Man, a thank you. I love that. That's super cool. Okay, we are going to have a, a moment of connecting with each other. And just in a minute, I'm going to ask you to find somebody that you feel real safe with. If you've come with a spouse and you want to do this with them, you can. Uh, if you don't feel spa safe with your own spouse, find somebody else. That was a joke. Come on, people. Uh, but you're, you're going to get with a friend that you feel comfortable with. And we can, you know, I'm sure you guys will find somebody that will be safe with. And we're going we're gonna to engage. Now, that looks a little ominous. We're not going to do all that today. But I'm going to have you pick out, uh, we're going to pick out one or two of the things that we're going to do together uh, and then share our hearts. Now, why are we doing this? Um, one of the, there's three basic movements inside a disciple that must be happening for you to grow and heal. For you to heal and grow into your true self, there's some things you want to be aware of that are happening, and you need to be proactive and, sell, and um, take initiative in your own life for your own growth to take place. I mean, nobody force feeds you, right? Don't you voluntarily go and find good food and eat it, right? No one forces you to do hygiene. Well, maybe somebody does, but anyway, uh, you know, brush your teeth, man, or whatever, but, but basically, you are called to go and make disciples and be disciples, that is the proactive mandate that God has given to us as a people. And a disciple is a follower of Jesus. They, they live in his presence, and they become like they, they, the person that they connect with. So in discipling the sequence, it starts with this. The most important thing for a disciple to do is connect. Connect or attach to the person of Jesus to the Trinity, and to the family of God. That could be your natural family or your spiritual family. But connecting opens the door to the life of Christ flowing through and into you. So the quality of your connection determines the level of life that flows. So the starting point for wholeness is attachment. And the whole gospel could be defined as secure attachment with Jesus and, and Christ's family. There's a book out by Jim Waller called Renovated, and he basically redefines salvation from a relational standpoint. We've normally defined salvation as transactional and legal. I get forgiven for my sins, I get out of hell and go to heaven. But the biblical definition of salvation is new birth into a family based on the quality of your connection. So really, salvation should be defined by attachment or connection. So the first thing we do is attachment or connection, and we want to get connected and then stay connected. And if my relational circuits close, my heart closes, it's important that I reopen them to somebody that feels like my enemy or to the Lord. i got to get reconnected if I'm in enemy mode. That's really important. So... The first things we do when we get disciples together in threes or fours or in a microchurch or kingdom family, the first thing we do is we go for a connection. And connection happens through gratitude. It, it, gratitude basically gets you out of your left brain information and into your right brain relational. So we start with gratitude strategically because in the Bible, gratitude opens us up to the Lord. So you'll notice here on our first step is we're going to share a gratitude story or a golden memory. A golden memory is a time, place, or experience where you felt the goodness of God in your life. It's a memory where you had more shalom or more peace and you sent God was there. So you can either pick a gratitude story like what you heard today were gratitude stories. But you want to only go about a minute to two minutes because if you, if you share too long, it can begin to cause people to check out and it does the very opposite thing that you're going for, which is connection. So you don't want to overshare or otherwise people will get a little overwhelmed. 
So pay attention to their overwhelm and share a gratitude story or a golden memory, right? Then we're going to go down into, we're going to skip down into communicating with Jesus. So we're going to do those two things, either a gratitude or a golden memory, and then communicate with Jesus. Now, communicating with Jesus, I want to point out that there's about five ways that the Lord could communicate with you today, this morning, in this room, with your friends. The first way is sensations in your body. You might feel physical sensations in your body that come from the Lord. And that is a message, trying to get a message through to you when he touches your body. Because your body is a temple. Another one is images. In, in the eyes of your heart, which is the biblical term for imagination, in the eyes of your heart, you might see a picture or have a vision or, or a daydream. Pay attention to that. It might be the Lord, right? Another one is uh, a feeling or an emotion. The, the Spirit of God could touch, touch your spirit or your emotion and interact with you right then and there. Another one would be um, a thought. You have the mind of Christ, so Christ can impart his thoughts into your thoughts. So pay attention to your thoughts because they might be coming from the Lord. Probably are. And then finally, scripture. You might get a scripture from the Lord um, or a song. And these are all impressions. So you want to basically become more sensitive to receive the inputs of the Holy Spirit onto your human spirit. Because a disciple is someone that walks with Jesus, loves like Jesus, relates to Jesus. And so how can we be a disciple if we're not being intimate with Emmanuel who is with us? So that's what we're going to do. I've made, um, I've made about 20 handouts for each group. So I'll come around when you get in grouped up. You only are going to need about 15 minutes for this, 15, 20 minutes um, for you to have this experience. So after you share a gratitude, get a little bit quiet. And follow that pro protocol. I said breathe deeply. Come to the Prince of Peace. Gaze on the Lord. Uh, and ask him. Open your heart and listen to God. Write down what you're hearing or sensing. And then what is God is saying. And then share with your group. Now this is a relational rhythm that we want to train people in when they become in a J3, Jesus plus three, or in a kingdom family. We want to practice this, practice this, practice this. You'll notice I sent some of you a handout this morning earlier. We want to become a community of practice because practice um, is essential in, in becoming what we want to be. How many of you like sports? Raise your hand. To be good at sports, do you have to practice? Anybody? Yeah, absolutely. You practice what you value. So we're going to practice the presence of God. So uh, team up with two or three people, four people. No more than four because that's a little too much and nobody will have a chance to share. So find a friend that you feel safe with and get in a group, face them, and then Follow those two things that we've asked you to do, and this will be our time for today. It's been a great Sunday, by the way. So, fi again, find somebody you feel real comfortable with and look at them, get in front of them. And, Janet, you've got, I'll, I'll, I'll have a guy group up here if, they want, if somebody wants to join me.